Hello, dear students of grade 12. Welcome back for studying another lesson about one of the other physical quantities of uh, chapter 1 in section 1 of physics book of grade 12. In this lesson, I will talk about uh, angular speed. Angular speed is the second quantity which can be used to describe how fast something travels on a circular path. We all know that we have a physical quantity in physics that tells us how fast things travel. If these things, if the objects travel on a linear path, the quantity is called velocity or speed. And if the object travels on a circular path, the quantity is called angular speed. So first, I would like to remind you about what speed was in grade 11, and then you will be able to understand what angular speed is in grade 12. So first, let's talk about speed or velocity in grade 11, okay? We had two quantities in grade 11. One of them was called speed, and the other one was called velocity. So let me give you an example that shows the speed of an object. Imagine this is a car that travels from here to here, and this car travels some distance, okay? If we consider it is equal to, let's say, 10 meters, and this uh, distance that the car travels takes some time, if we assume that it's five seconds, okay? So if I find the speed of this car, the speed is equal to the distance traveled by the time, okay? The distance traveled by the time, which is equal to um, 10 divided by five meter per second, so it is equal to two meter per second. So if you look at this result, this result tells us how fast the object travels. It has only magnitude. It doesn't have direction. In another way, speed tells us how fast things travel without telling us anything about the direction or where the object is heading to, is traveling to, okay? So here, we do not have any direction. We can say that speed is a scalar quantity, is a scalar quantity, and it doesn't have direction. In another way, it's always positive, okay? It's always positive. And also, it's measured by meter per second. So this is the speed that you studied in grade 11. Uh, if I find the velocity of this car, if we consider the car travels from here to here, and the car travels a, a displacement, and this is the initial position of the car, xi, zero meter, and then travels to here, five meters. Uh, initial time interval is again zero second, and the final uh, time interval is equal to, uh, let's say, um, two seconds, okay, or one second. So if I find the velocity of this car, velocity is equal to displacement divided by time. The change in the displacement of the object divided by the time interval. This is how we find velocity. Velocity is equal to the change in the displacement. Displacement is equal to xf minus xi divided by tf minus ti, which if you find it, it's equal to five minus zero, um, one minus zero, so it is equal to five meter per second. So if you look at this result, uh, the result tells us two things. Uh, one of them is that the car is traveling by a magnitude of velocity which is equal to five meters per second. And the other one is the direction. So this is the magnitude. And the other one is direction. This direction, guys, is positive when the object travels to east or north. It's positive when the object travels to east or north. Or it can be negative. How? If this object 
traveled to west, the velocity of the car would be negative. Let me tell you this. If initially the car is here, if initially the car is here and then travels to here, in this case, the velocity of the car is going to be negative. Why? Because xf is equal to minus 5 meter and xi is 0. Uh, so tf is equal to 1 second and ti is equal to 0 second. So when we find the velocity, velocity is going to be minus 5, minus 0, 1 minus 0. So velocity is going to be negative 5 meter per second. So if you look at here, the velocity is negative. This is the direction. And direction of velocity is negative when the object travels to west or to south. OK? And this is the magnitude. This is the magnitude. So I hope you guys understood the difference between velocity and speed. This is how we find the uh, velocity or speed of an object. Speed, you don't care about the direction. You just define the distance to the uh, time interval. But velocity, we should pay attention to the direction of the motion because it plays a very important role in predicting where the, the object is heading to. Okay? Now I am going to talk about angular speed. Angular speed, which is a physical quantity. Uh, now I am going to talk about angular speed. Angular speed is, uh, if I define it, is the change in angular displacement. in a time interval. Is the change in the angular displacement in a time interval. Uh, I am going to give you two examples just to help you to figure out uh, what angular speed can tell us. Uh, this is a circular path and let's say it's a blue path and we have another circular path which is, let's say, green. And we have two cars traveling on this circular path. This is one of them. OK, this car travels to here. And this is another car travels on this green circular path. OK. So if you look at this car, uh, this one travels a quarter of the circle. This is theta i and this is theta f. It travels the circle, the quarter of the circle. This is time, initial time interval is equal to zero and final time interval is equal to one second. Okay? And this is equal to delta theta. Uh, if you look at this angular displacement, the change in the angular displacement is equal to pi over two radian. I hope you guys understood how this equal to pi over 2 radian because this car has traveled only a quarter of the circle. So the amount of angular displacement we have here is equal to pi over 2. And this one travels the same amount of the circular path. Delta theta is equal to pi over 2 radian, but in a longer time interval. This is. Um, Let's say it's equal to 10 seconds, OK? It's equal to 10 seconds. So how to find angular speed? Angular speed is the change in the uh, angular displacement in a time interval. 
Let me clarify it in this way. Imagine you and, you and your friend are the drivers of these two cars, OK? You are the driver of the car that travels on this blue circular path, and your friend is the driver of the, the other car that travels on the uh, green circular path. You see that you travel faster than your friend. Why? Because your friend has finished a quarter of the circular path in 10 seconds, but you have finished a quarter of the circular path in just one second. Okay? So this tells you that you are uh, moving faster than your friend. This tells you that your angular speed is greater than the angular speed of your friend. Okay? So angular speed tells us how fast something travels on a circular path. This is predicted by the amount of angular displacement that you travel uh, on the circular path. So we can uh, summarize the, the topic in this way. If we travel a great angular displacement in a time interval, this means that we have uh, an angular speed. Okay. Uh, this means that we have an angular speed great. Now I am going to determine the angular speed. So angular speed is denoted by omega average. Okay? It's equal to delta theta divided by delta t. It's equal to delta theta divided by delta t. So if you uh, look at this equation, uh, delta theta is measured by um, radian degree and ref, okay? And time is measured by second. So the unit that we get for angular speed are radian per second, or degree per second, or revolution per second. So, but which one is the SI unit? This one is the SI unit, and angular speed should always be measured by uh, radian per second. There is, a, there is a question here. Can angular speed be positive or negative? It's always positive. Why? Because we say angular speed. We do not say angular velocity. If we uh, said angular velocity, that would mean the angular uh, velocity can be positive or negative. But here we say that it's angular speed, so it's always positive. It's always positive. So angular speed. Uh, is always positive, is always positive. So uh, you may ask, teacher, we divide delta theta by delta t. Delta theta is a vector quantity. It can be positive if the object rotated counterclockwise, and it can be negative if the object rotated clockwise. How can angular speed, angular speed be only positive? Well, here we can answer this question in this way. Delta theta, yes, it's a vector quantity. It can be positive or negative. But here we don't care to the direction of the motion. We just care to how fast the object travels. Okay? The direction of the motion is not important at all. We don't care whether the object uh, uh, rotates clockwise or counterclockwise. We just divide the, the magnitude of the angular displacement to the time interval so we can find the angular uh, you know, speed of the object. Okay. Uh, I hope you guys understood the lesson. Thanks for watching.